Welcome to the Beer Frontier, my name is Gage. And I'm Robert, and as ever we're here for the beer. This week we're going to be looking at wheat beer. We'll go and visit Ben, the microbrewer. We have two local wheat beers to try. We'll see what Enzo is cooking. We'll taste a German wheat beer. And we'll go on the road and visit a microbrewery. So Gage, wheat beer. Tell me about wheat beer. Well, nearly all beers are made from barley, which is malted. And this is because barley is the most suitable grain for making beer, which Ben can explain another day. Wheat beers are made mainly from wheat with a small amount of barley. And the flavour profile is completely different. With these German-style wheat beers, we, apart from the wheaty-type flavours, we also get some bubblegum or some banana or some cloves, some spicy beers, some spicy flavours and aromas. So these are beers which are really nice to drink over summer because they're quite different. They're not bitter, they're quite different. Mm. And um, they're just interesting beers, so I'm looking forward to this. Yes, and... Uh... As usual, you have a beer in your bonnet, don't you? Well, it's not actually a beer in my bonnet. It's just I've been asked so many times how we are ignoring the elephant in the room, which is VB. Why have we never reviewed VB? So the viewers have spoken and we're reviewing VB. VB outsells every other Australian lager at least two to one. VB accounts for about a billion dollar of sales a year. So what is it about this style of beer? Well, it's a very light beer. It's probably slightly more bitter than some other lagers, but it's very easy to drink, which is really important in a hot climate because it is really refreshing. So why do some beer purists sneer at VB? Well, they say it's an industrial type beer made with just consistency and lowest common denominator. So it also lacks bodies. What I mean by body is um, it lacks palate weight, it lacks substance. Uh, this is because they have used cane sugar to replace malted barley because it's cheaper. Although it could be argued Australians actually prefer this. Yeah. The other thing about this style of beer is it lacks complexity. So this stuff is really good for after mowing the lawns. There's nothing much to it. But VB enters the mythology a bit like, oh, it's Australia's national beer. Well, that's not quite true. Up until the 1990 recession, it wasn't nearly as well known as other Foster's products like um, Foster's Lager, for example. Yeah. Um, but the 1990 recession, something happened and young girls who wore miniskirts and high heels started drinking VB, even though they'd never seen a blue singlet in their life. In fact, they used to say it was the hardest job in Australian brewing, being in charge of marketing VB, because nobody knew why it actually sold. <laughs> Anyhow, what do you think, Robert? Well, you can get it brewing, you can get it reviewing, <laughs> but what you can't get out of it is a nice taste, I think. I've always found VB to be a bit soapy in its taste and more like a um, concoction of chemicals than a, than a beer. Um, it's got a bit of a, some sort of musty aftertaste to it. It's best when it's really cold because then you can't taste it. Um, I don't think there's much to it. I don't even like it very much. It's a one star beer for me. Okay, well, it looks like VB, it smells like VB, and it tastes like VB. I think it's very boring, and let's move on. OK, let's go and see what Ben the Home Brewer is up to. One and a half stars. Welcome back. Um, today, as you can just about see here, I've got myself some bottles in my hand, and funnily enough, we're going to do some bottling. Um, what type of bottle should you use? Well, look, that's up to you, but I strongly recommend you pick a homebrew bottle, which are these big, thick glass bottles. I don't recommend that you try and reuse a lot of beer bottles, which are made of very thin glass, and let's face it, could uh, 
be rather dangerous if they decided to explode on you. Um, so pick yourself up some fresh one of these from the homebrew, homebrew store, or of course, like me, recycle. Um, what's really important is that when you're recycling your bottles, you've drank your beer, don't let that beer sit on the side to let the scum build up in the bottom of it and set hard. It's really important that you rinse this out as soon as you finish drinking it, because otherwise it's gonna set in there and it'll be really hard to get out later. That, that's gonna be no fun for you whatsoever. So I've cleaned these, of course, once I've finished, uh, and I've stored these out in the garage. As you can see, like, you know, most things that sit out there, they're covered in lots of grime. So we're basically gonna give those a good wash on the outside, but most importantly, a good uh, sterilize on the inside. Back on sterilizers again, well, look, you can use what you want to. Good old bleach is, is, is a fantastic one, as long as we rinse it all out. So got here me tub of bleach. So I will uh, quite simply demonstrate, pop the thing in there. Get yourself your bottle brush, fill it up fully, give it a good, uh, good plunge, turn it around a few times, make sure it's fully full up, and then empty that out. There we have one sterilized bottle. We then have some warm water. We need to use our little bottle rinser. Give that some good plunges. And that will then make sure there's warm water rinsing out all that bleach. We then pop that aside there and that's gonna to leave to drain until we come back to sanitize it and start bottling. So we'll get back to that in a moment. All right, so it looks like these uh, have all had a good drain. So pop it off, give it a good smell. If you're using bleach, if there's any smell of bleach in there whatsoever, you haven't rinsed it out properly. Give it another go in some hot water, get rid of that bleach. Once we know that we've got a clean smelling bottle, we're ready to sanitize it, okay? Quite simply, same thing again, we've got our sanitizer sitting in here. I'd probably give it about a good three or four goes until you can see that it's fully coated all the way inside the bottle. Back onto the tree again. Um, probably would take around about 10 minutes, maybe up to 20 minutes, something like that, just to stay coated on the inside of that bottle. It's a no rinse sanitizer, we don't have to rinse it. So after 10 minutes, we're completely ready to just bottle that and cap it. So we'll come back then. Okay, fantastic. So our bottles are now sanitized. Our beer is in here ready to go. What I did basically is we need to uh, prime these bottles with some uh, sugar, in this case, some dextrose. So all I did is I put um, a liter of water on the stove, brought that to boiling, and I mixed in a set amount of dextrose um, to actually prime these bottles. In this case, it was about, about 100 grams or something like that to go in my 20 liter batch. Um, this is to replace uh, using those carbonation drops or a teaspoon of sugar in each bottle, which uh, some of you may be familiar with. It's a much cleaner uh, and easier way and probably a more even way to distribute the sugar into the bottles so that they can then go forth and um, carbonate in the bottle and yeah, give us that lovely beer flavor. So I simply drop that into the top in my boiling pan and then I used uh, just a tube there to rack off my um, fermented beer so that it took the beer off of the yeast and I've got nice bright beer here mixed with my sugars. And here we have it. So that's all the hard work done. All we simply now need to do is put our sterilized bottle on there. The little uh, nodule at the end pops up and lo and behold, my beer is filling. It will automatically fill uh, right to the top. And once I'm happy that I've got my level, I can pop it off and then we put the cap on and we're in business. Now, as far as the caps go, there we go. You can sanitize your caps. A lot of people will simply just keep them covered in the bag and pull them out as they need them. Um, I'd probably recommend putting them in the sanitizer. Count the amount you're gonna use because if, if you um, put too many in there, of course, you wouldn't wanna reuse them, they'll go rusty. So leave those in there for 10 minutes normally. Cap straight on and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so there we have it. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. One finished beer, perfectly capped. Store that away for, oh, what are we gonna say, four weeks, and then uh, give it a try and, and see where we go. Um, that's one way of doing it, as you can see. It's a fair process, but, but well worth it. Um, there are some easier ways of doing it. You can, in fact, uh, bypass all this and do it straight from a, a gun from a keg, which I'll uh, show you how to do uh, in the next episode. So we look forward to uh, seeing you there then. Good on you.